Good evening everyone, my name's Sam and welcome to the video. The reason I'm introducing myself is that I have a funny feeling I'm going to get a few extra people watching this that wouldn't normally watch my channel. Now if you're not aware, this is a predominantly, well, all motorcycle channel, all motorcycle adventures, but I just bought something that's not a motorcycle. Instead of being a massive cocktail, shall I just show you what I bought and then I'll explain why I bought it afterwards? Yeah. You better. <laughs> 1990 Suzuki Carry K truck. <laughs> and it's tiny. Before anyone goes anywhere, if you've watched the channel for a while and you know I have the rather modified uh, Honda Monkey bike, just imagine that there. <laughs> so there's a couple of reasons I bought this. Me and my other half have bought a house. We're renovating that house. It's crap looking veneer doors, rubble from us taking down walls and things like that. Up to now, we've been putting that in bags and then in the back of my car. It just leaks onto the carpets. I've had to jet wash the boot floor. Even if we put liners down, it always leaks. So with that in mind, I started looking at vans, at pickups. Also with a monkey bike, I really like going further afield on that. Going when we did the Wales Tet videos, things like that, you know I like dicking around on a hilariously small bike. Would be nice to be able to throw it in the back of something, whether it be a van or a truck or whatever. Third reason, I want something that I could dart around town in. My gym is a mile away from home. Getting in my two litre diesel lay on, it doesn't even get warm by the time I've driven to the gym and driven back. And then I remember that in Japan, they have these things called K cars, K-E-I. Now a K car in Japan is a car that will fit within certain weight, height, width, length, kind of restrictions. Currently, I think they're all limited to 660 cc. And the idea behind it is if you buy a K car, you get loads of tax reliefs. They have all sorts of stuff. They've got vans, they've got cars, they've got MPVs. A Suzuki Jimny is technically a K car if you get the 660 cc one from Japan. People bring them to the UK, to the US, into Europe and modify them. The same vibe with the Monkey. You've got a tiny little vehicle that's horrendously underpowered, stick knobblies on it, stick beefy suspension, I can't tell you how funny it is overtaking an enduro bike, like an out and out built for the purpose enduro bike on a 125cc nine horsepower monkey bike with knobblies on it. Once you get used to the fact that you're riding a nine horsepower 125cc motorcycle that is tiny, just embrace it and it becomes the best thing you ever do. And that seems to be the general consensus with K cars. In Japan, this would have been a farming truck. Now this culture is massive in the US, but it's really quite small in the UK. I don't know why, there's just no one here that really picks up on it. It's not as common that these trucks are imported into the UK. So this is a Japanese truck. This has come from Japan. It was imported at the end of 2023. I think it was October, 2023. Now there was a few things I wanted to get with the truck. I wanted relatively low miles if I could very little rust, which is a key thing. And although Japan don't salt their roads, you can get quite a lot of rust when you get imported vehicles because they're at sea for three weeks kind of thing. I wanted four wheel drive because I've moved to the country, case in point, the country. The UK just cannot deal with any form of inclement weather. We have snow here and the entire country shuts down and it's really irritating. That tied to the fact that we're out here, four wheel drive would be really useful to have. I wanted switchable four wheel drive because if you drive in two wheel drive most of the time, it's way more economical. The trucks are normally faster if they're two wheel drive. And I wanted stuff like low range and diff locks because it's cool for no reason whatsoever besides the fact it's cool. I could put some knobbly tires on it, I can get it stuck somewhere, and then I can go, ah, oh, I better put my diff locks on. Now with criteria in place, there's like four, maybe five types of truck that you can choose from, all of which have different pros and different cons. The Mitsubishi Mini Cab, you have the Daihatsu Hijet, Suzuki Carry, uh, you have the Subaru Sambar, and you have the Honda Acti. Now the Honda Acti, and the Subaru Sandbar seem to be the most popular ones in America. To get a Honda Acti, I think you have to go for a Honda Acti Attack, which is just hen's teeth. They're, they're so rare to get them. Subaru Sandbar pickup trucks just don't exist. Like no one seems to import them. And then I stumbled across this one. I stumbled across a few others. There was a Honda Acti that I was looking at that was a bit too rusty for my liking. Let me show you this exact truck. 
my truck. It was registered in January of 1990, which is about two months shy of them changing the legislation from 550cc or 540cc or whatever it is to 660cc. Essentially a motorcycle engine in there. So I'll just pop that latch there and pull the seat out. There's your little engine. All three sides of this drop all the way down. That three cylinder inline three engine is powering a four wheel drive Suzuki 12 valve with diff locks. <laughs> you like my fruit pastels. Switchable, high and low range, and four wheel drive. So it's two high, four high, four low. It's got a four speed transmission, it's got that retro look. For anyone wanting to know what the carrying capacity in the back of this, it's a hilarious 350 kilos. I don't think I'm ever going to put 350 kilos in the back of this, but it's funny to know that it can. Weirdly, this bed, although it's a tiny truck, is the same length as like a, I think it's a Ford Raptor or something like that. It's not quite an F-150, but it's a massive bed. It is slightly slower than the 660s, but I managed to get a whopping 62 miles an hour out of it earlier, and it was screaming its nuts off. It's easy to work on. The four-wheel drive system and diff locks are all mechanical. There's no electronics there. You kids born later than year 2000 won't know what that thing is, but that is where the term wind down window comes from. I drove this into Travis Perkins to get some sandbags earlier because truck and man stuff. And I'm pretty sure it's the smallest thing they've ever seen in their life. And they just found it funny. Other things on my list of stuff that I wanted with the truck was very little rust and very low mileage. That thing there says 28,958 kilometres. In old money, i.e. miles, is probably 18,000. It's a 1990 truck, and it's on 18,000 miles. I was a little bit like, mm, is, are all the seals and all the gaskets and everything going to be rotten? I don't know, but we'll find out, I guess. So yeah, tick on the low mileage front as well. Now, these things are known for rusting at the bottom of the windscreen, in the arches and in the seals. Lift the carpet there's not a, a single speck of rust on that all the way up here there's some wear marks where people have been like jumping in and out and stuff but that is solid there's not a single bit of rust along there now if i look at the bottom corners of this there's literally no rust under there at all it's now covered in mud because i just did some off-roading but underneath it is again not rusty at all the only thing that is slightly rusty is the exhaust connector bed is completely fine the only thing like you have tiny little sections of rust like that which is all surface actual structural rust there's none of it so yeah another tick for the rust front you're not gonna be able to really see but those are the those are some bushings under there they're lovely and rubbery still they're not hard or brittle or anything like that everything works in it absolutely everything getting back in the truck because it's bloody cold outside it's relatively cramped in here that's me sitting in it and my feet are doing this. That's the front of the truck, so I can't actually straighten my leg. That is the most classic looking interior I've seen. Like it's got a proper old school little radio in here. It's got just absolutely shed loads of paperwork. Now, as you'd expect, because it was only imported last year, all of this is Japanese. You can use Google Translate with a photo option and you can find out what all of this is, but it's just, this is all like, um, service reports and like a, essentially like an MOT in the UK have the spark plugs been done have the belts been done and there's just like I mean there's just loads of there's probably 30 of these if not more it's clearly been looked after by the Japanese farmer man I'm assuming it's a man I probably shouldn't assume should I because 2024 and you can't assume stuff like that I know this is like a, a novelty for us and if you're Japanese watching this you probably think I'm a complete and utter moron but seeing all the little Japanese explanations and writing everywhere, like explaining how things work. And here's the sun visor with, I don't know what, I don't know what any of that says, but I'll translate it someday. You've got what I assume is an old tax disc up there, highway, motorway kind of toll pass thing. On the way home, the amount of people that have got, like lent out the window of vans, of trucks, of cars, thumbs up, like that's, that's sick, oh my God, that's so cool. That kind of, everyone's just smiling at it. It's giving me Honda Monkey vibes. And that's what I wanted. It's gonna be a useful truck that I can use around home, renovate the house with it, all that kind of stuff. I can do four wheel driving. And also imagine ABR, me turning up in this thing, 
lifted suspension, knobbly tires, roof rack on, big LED light on it, a roof tent thing that goes over the bed, and then the monkey with knobbly tires in the back of this. It's just gonna be so funny, so funny. Immediate plans for it is very, very loose. I'm gonna service it, although it has been looked after. I'm gonna service it, I'm gonna change the belts, all that kind of stuff. It just needs a little bit of tarting up. Like this needs like a back to black um, clean stuff on it. All the bulbs work, all the lights work, all the reverse lights work, everything works on it, which is what I love. I know it sounds a little bit cliche and weird, but I wanna jap it up a bit because it is a Japanese import. So I want to make it look like a Japanese import or like I want people to know it's a Japanese import because that makes it horrendously cooler. From the extensive history, I've Google translated and found out what the original Japanese number plate for this is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a smaller version of that and I'm gonna have the two next to each other. That's a ridiculously long introduction to another vehicle in my garage. It's a tiny truck and it's hilarious. It's JDM AF, as the kids would say, probably. I, I can touch that side sitting in the driver's seat, which is quite, quite funny, because if I just want to wind down that window, I just lean over and wind it down. <laughs> I drove however many miles back, 80 miles back, from where I picked it up in Guildford. I used less than a quarter of a tank. Starts on the button, mate. That exhaust makes me feel big if you know what I mean. Listen to the beast purr. <laughs> um, but yeah, seats are all in really good condition. Headliner is in really good condition. Dashboard's in really good condition. Steering wheel's in good condition. Door cards are in really good condition. <laughs> Bang. <laughs> My little Suzuki Gary. Handbrake off. It's quite loud in here. No power steering. I did do my bed up, didn't I? Yeah. One of the things I do want to do is soundproof this cabin a little bit more. Just get some soundproofing pads. Anything above 20 mile an hour, I'm in third. And then anything above 35, 40 mile an hour, I'm in fourth. I'm doing 30-ish mile an hour now, and it's more than fine. Seats are really comfy, I'm comfy. There's not a huge amount of legroom as I mentioned before, but it's super nippy, it's super light. I've had it for not even five, six hours, and it's just brilliant. In theory, a Japanese vehicle should be relatively reliable. It's got no real electronics. You catch a reflection in a window, it looks really cool. Like it's just, I don't know, it's just such a innocent, easy vehicle to drive, own, and people seem to love it, and I love it. Indicators on the wrong side, <laughs> but I mean, to be fair, I haven't got that wrong yet. The only thing I am getting wrong at the moment, which I really need to stop doing, is in my Leon, because it's quite a talky diesel and whatever, quite often I pull away in second, go up into fourth, then I go up into sixth. I don't bother using first, third, or fifth a lot of the time, and I've been doing that in this. There's quite an alarming noise when you uh, try and put it into sixth. Because just a reminder, it's only got four gears and this, where the sixth is, is reverse. So um, yeah, I've done that twice now and I really need to not do that anymore because not good. <laughs> Woo! Anyway, I'll stop banging on now. Thank you very, very much for watching. And uh, you might see this a little bit more. I might do an another YouTube channel, I don't know. But you might see there's more on the channel, and if not, you'll see it carting the uh, monkey around, probably picking the Ducati up when that inevitably wants to break down again. You'll see me chavving it up a bit and ruining it for a really lovely classic truck that's got that's not been molested, and I'm gonna molest it. So thank you very, very much for watching, and I'll see you in next week's video. Goodbye.